Whenever you plan to dip or pour glaze on the outside, if you're going to get glaze on the bottom, you always must sponge it off. And the sponging can be uh, made easier if you use a little bit of wax resist. The wax resist that I have comes in little containers and you use a clean brush and what you do is you just apply one coat on the bottom or the foot of the pot. In this case, I am putting it around the bottom and I go up the outer edge just a little bit. And I actually have an indentation in this little pinch pot, so um, I don't need to wax the whole thing. If it were flat, I would wax the whole thing. I would let it dry for a few minutes and then it's ready to dip. Wax does not prevent glaze from getting on your pot. The purpose of wax is it helps you to sponge the pot more easily after you have glazed it. You do not need to wax if you are brushing on a glaze because you can avoid getting it on the bottom. As you make choices about your glazing, you can of course brush glaze, pour, dip, or a combination of any of them for your pieces. For um, brush glazing, you would just quite simply select one of the containers from the shelves, um, brush three layers on, and uh, make sure the layers are even, and, and that should be good. For dip glazing, you always want to take a whisk and whisk up the glaze as well. You want to make sure that it's even consistency top to bottom. You can even use these dip glazes to fill up some of the uh, glazes from the back, back there. Now, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to dip the entire thing in the same color. Now, if it has a handle like this, or I could even hold it by the side if it didn't have a handle, I'm just going to submerge it. I'm going to pour it out, and I'm going to shake it off. And I hold it upside down as I shake it off so it encourages some of the excess to come up. Now, this part under the handle and the handle part that I didn't get, I will let it dry and then I'll go back and I'll just um, get that uh, other part by dipping it the rest of the way. Another technique? Another technique I can do if I want to submerge the whole thing at once, if I don't want to hold it and then have to come back and fix a little part, I can always use tongs. You might remember tongs from previously in the trimester. I hold it with uh, one side on the outside, one side on the inside. I submerge it. I bring it out upside down, give it a good shake to encourage the excess to come off. When it stops dripping, then I can take it and I can go set it on the table or the counter and then I can sponge it off when it is dry. Sponge off the bottom, that is. By the way, I did wax the bottom of this and I waxed the bottom of this already. This is the cup that I dipped a few minutes ago and I did not get the handle or underneath the handle there. So it's dry enough, I can hold it now. I'm gonna stir it up again. You always must stir every time you go to dip. And I'm just going to submerge that handle and get the part that I missed. Now it's all covered. Okay. This little pinch bowl has a really awesome texture on the outside. You need to make sure that you are using a glaze to enhance texture and not just hide texture if that's what your design shows. I want to show you a couple examples of glazes that do or won't show texture. You can see that these two show all the little throwing grooves and the little stars. These don't even show the throwing groups really. These two are perfect for a texture like that I have on that pinch pot. This yellow one would be a bad choice because it would cover it up. Now, I could use a glaze on the inside that's not great with texture and a separate glaze on the outside. And that's what I'm gonna do on this. For this little pinch pot, I'm going to put lapis on the inside, which does not show texture well. And I'm going to put sapphire on the outside. Now, with the lapis on the inside, I'm going to just quickly rotate it and pour it out. And if you missed a little bit, there we go. You can get it again. OK. 
Okay. Next, I'm going to turn it upside down, and I'm going to get the rim, because I want to get the rim a little bit in lapis, because when I go to turn it over and I do this um, in the sapphire, I want to have some place to hold it. Now you can see my big dribble. I'm going to sponge that dribble off. The reason that I did the inside first was in case I dribbled on the outside, I could fix it. If I would have done the outside first and then dribbled, I would have a, a mess to try to fix. So I'm going to set this to the side until it dries. I'm going to mix up gunmetal green. Sometimes when you're the first person to come over and mix up a glaze in a long time, it will have settled. It's very thin at the top and it's very thick at the bottom. You need to be pretty vigorous about the way you mix to make sure that everything in the bottom goes into suspension. You want to make sure that it is an even consistency to top, top to bottom. If it's thin on top and thick on underneath, you are going to get an inconsistent glaze result. Okay. Now, I have a cup which I've already glazed on the inside with Chino and then I turned it over and I did the outside bottom in Chino and I'm going to do this upper part in gunmetal green. Gunmetal green is one of the few um, Archie's base series glazes which sometimes has a problem with peeling. You should always make sure that you're overlapping it on a rim on top of another glaze. If you use it by itself it can sometimes chip. So what I'm going to do is I'm just turning it upside down I'm overlapping it a little bit and I'll give it a nice shake. And I'm going to have it contrast on the inside. It's a lovely color. The next glaze that I'm going to use is blue purple. Now blue purple looks very different in the bucket than it does as the, uh, the sample. It looks very tan but it turns out to be a bluish purple light in color. Blue purple is also one of the Archie's base series that it should be placed on top of another glaze so it won't chip. So what I'm going to do on this bowl that I previously glazed in lapis, I'm going to come down, I'm going to glaze it in blue purple. I'm going to let it drop into the bucket. Don't walk around with it dripping. We'll get it all over the floor. And that's going to make a really pretty blending of the two when that fires. I'm going to take this cup that I dipped in lapis earlier and I'm going to dip it in blue purple. Kind of shake it off. Get the excess back in there. And then when it stops dripping, I can turn it back over. If I turn it over too quickly, it will run. I'm going to dip one very small area again in the blue purple. And I'm going to pull it back out. So I dipped again probably no more than a half an inch on that top edge. Quite often, quite often when I glaze, I will find air bubbles have surfaced when I dip glaze. To get rid of those, just gently buff over them with a clean, dry hand, and that will fill the air bubbles with a little bit of the dust from the glaze so it won't mar your surface. Next, I'd like to show you how you can dip a glaze half and half, side to side. For this, I'm using steel gray chino. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an overlap. I'm going to do steel gray chino and then I'm going to do another glaze on top of that and I'm going to have an overlap. So where they overlap, it's going to create a third color. So there's my steel gray chino. Going to kind of Turn that upside down, encourage the dripping to come off the top edge. 
I'll let that dry and I'll come back and I'll do my other color in just a moment. To finish off that cup, I'm now going to use cedar chino. Um, when you go to use a glaze that's on the back of the cart that's under the pug mill, just pull out the whole cart. It'll make it a lot easier. I usually like to use the glazes while they're sitting on the cart. That way I don't have to uh, worry about spilling it and moving it. I'll just use it on the cart. I have steel gray chino on the cup. Now I'm going to dip and overlap it in cedar chino. So where the two begin to overlap, I will actually get a third color when it fires. Obviously I'll have to sponge off that foot when it dries. For this bowl, I'm going to do it all in root beer, but I'm just going to do half at a time because it's going to be a lot easier to hold. I will take it and I will dip it in, pull it out, shake it off, and when this part is dry I'll come back and I'll just glaze the other portion of it, just overlapping ever so slightly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use sapphire and I'm going to glaze a whole pot in sapphire. using tongs. I'm going to dip in and dip out, pull it out, shake it off. Now this one I did not wax on the bottom because this is textured all over and I'm going to have to sponge it off that texture. I'll leave it in some of the texture but sponge off a lot of that. To finish off this bowl, I'm going to dip the bottom half in sapphire, holding it by the top edge where I dipped it in lapis. Get some of that off the bottom, and there we go. For this piece, I wanted to show you how you can pour a glaze on the exterior if you would like. Obviously, I could brush it, but I wanted to show you how pouring it over swiftly in one coat will cover it, and that will be enough. Just one coat, just like as if, if I were to dip, just one coat of pouring. Now, I suggest that you have a towel on hand, so when you go to walk away, you're going to catch your drips. Every glaze can be brushed. This is the bowl where I have dip, uh, poured the outside with chino, and then here on the inside, if I want to brush it, I just brush on three coats. Now if you do have a heavy texture on areas, remember that you can often get away with just two because a heavy texture will collect more glaze. You know that your glaze is ready to receive another coat when it dries to the touch. If you can touch it and it doesn't come off, oops. If it doesn't come off on your hands, then you can put on another coat. If you keep a sponge handy like that, it can catch little dribbles that you might have. Or I wasn't very careful. Okay. When I use a paintbrush, I usually like to use the biggest fluffiest brush that I can find that fits my pot. I am using a really fat big brush. You don't have to use one of the biggest ones like this, but I like it because it certainly makes quick work of glazing. I'm now doing my second coat of the root beer glaze. You have to keep count. Every once in a while I have someone that comes up to me and says, do I have enough coats? And I always say, I can't tell by looking how many coats you put on there, so always keep count. 
All right. So really two, two coats on heavy texture is usually sufficient. I'll just hit that again. There we go. And three on smooth textures is what you usually want to brush. Look for any spots where you might have clay showing through and you want to make sure that you hit those. And that's brushing.